2022 training camp with Jamin uh, Davis, uh, second year. Talk to me about second year being here, second training camp. I mean, so far it's really good just going into training camp. You feel a lot more comfortable and just going out and knowing what you're supposed to be doing a lot more. Uh, everything just seemed a lot more slowed down. I just want to go out there and have fun with it now. Hey, Jamin, did you hear how I slowly said your name? I said Jamin, and I just waited and put the emphasis on Davis at the end. Ma yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> so, so year one, assess that for me because it wasn't, you know, probably a year that you would have wanted, but it was a, a learning process. Right. right. I mean, like I said before, it was definitely one of those things that's a humbling experience, you know, just just a foundation setter, if you may, because it's one of those things that going forward, you know, that's not really your standard. And even if it was at times you showing flashes or whatever, like <laughs> all these people want to say, it's, it's still not what you expect as a player. So just going forward, I don't really I always quiet the outside noise. I don't I don't been in this position before. So it's nothing for me that's like, OK, I ain't I'm, I'm not good enough to be here or anything like that. I'm about to go out there and do what I can and just make some plays. See, you said the key thing is quiet the outside noise in your ear, and a lot of people can't do that. How were you able to do that? I mean, it's one of those things that you learn growing up. I mean, being from South Georgia, Hinesville, Georgia, and just Little Whiskey, the whole area down there is one of those things that growing up you learn a lot about, like, yourself, just being in different aspects of just people talking down on you and telling you you can't get this far, and then you get to the next level of play, college and whatnot, and you got – Basically starting over from day one is like all these people just trying to put you down and then you get here and it's like, yeah, you know you're capable of doing it because you made it this far. So it's like you just go out there and do what you can to better yourself and just improve as a player. So going forward, you can make more of a splash. Venus Williams, great tennis player, the Williams sister, she said something about the criticism. She said that she tells people who try to criticize her. I don't see you out on this tennis court. You're going to pretty much say the same thing as far as football. I think that's definitely a no-brainer. I mean, they don't know what it's like to be out here and, and just having these 11-hour days and whatnot. And just they, they don't get put through the same process as us. So, I mean, the only thing that matters is the guys in that locker room and the guys in that facility, and that's, that's how it's always going to be. So, looking back at last year, we can all take some positive things from your first year. What would be the thing, one thing, or a couple of things that you can say that I can take from last year to this year and, and build on it? I mean, definitely getting a chance to see a lot of these different plays and whatnot and understanding, like, okay, I've been here before. I know what's coming. So it's like going into this year, it's like, okay, I've seen this same set before, so now I know what's coming. I'm going to be a step ahead of the play. And then that's the recipe for making a lot more plays, honestly. You know, in college you play all across, you know, middle, outside, Last year you played probably more middle. Which which are you comfortable with? Because it looks like you're more outside this year. I mean, same thing. I always say wherever they line me up, I'm gonna play at the end of the day. I don't care. I don't care as long as I get a chance to go out there and make some plays. That's that's what it really boils down to. But regardless, anything that'll give me a chance to be a true sideline to sideline guy to just try to play faster at the end of the day and just make plays and coverage and in the run game and just hopefully go get some TFLs and whatnot and just do what I can to just make a splash for this team. So looking at this year, set any goals for yourself? What do you want this uh, season to look like? If you were looking in the mirror and you said, Jamin, me, I want this year to be what? Special, honestly. Year two, I want year two to definitely be special because everybody just expecting all of these crazy goals for themselves and whatnot. For me, I feel like going forward to do yourself a favor, you have to set new goals every single year. So, I mean, why settle for less at the end of the day? So just have a special year in general. Just go out there and make as many plays as possible, make a playoff run, like everything. Like I said before, we got goals for ourselves. And as a whole, we just trying to set a standard for this team that can't be changed ever. Is it fun? Because as hard as it is, <laughs> and you you sweating out here. <laughs> How much fun is this, though? Oh, man, you got to love it, man. You got to be a little crazy up top to get out here and do the same things that we do, man. It's, it's, it's a blessing, though, to get a chance to get out here and be with so many talented guys from different backgrounds in life and just come together for a common goal, which is winning games for this team. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely, like I said, a blessing at the end of the day, nothing short of one. Now, we talked about the, the football end of things. Now we're going to talk about the fun things. If somebody was to ask who Jamin is, what does he like to do, uh, what is special about him, uh, you're talking about yourself now. Well, what would you say to those fans out there, the people, to get to know you a little bit better? And I, 
I wish I could tell you. I'm. I guess I'm a big NASCAR guru. I love cars and stuff like that. And then for the most part, you you might rarely see me out on the town or anything like that because I'm really like laid back and stay to myself kind of guy as well. But that's probably the biggest thing is like just on my downtime away from ball and whatnot. You might catch me going fishing every now and then or something dealing with cars. Okay, I'm gonna go fishing with him one time too <laughs> to see if he's really a fisherman to see if he can catch anything. <laughs> Have you? Did you catch anything during the off season? Nah, nothing recently. My main focus was trying to get ready for year two, so that's yeah. how it was for me. Most important. Now you said NASCAR. How did you get involved in that? Honestly, I really couldn't even explain that one to you. It was one of those things where growing up, I just got into it, and then next thing you know, every Sunday I was religiously watching the races. So. Um, that's exactly how I ended up meeting my idol growing up, uh, Jimmy Johnson. Recently, I met him, and now it's like that's one of my buddies. So, uh, definitely just watching him growing up, just seeing him winning all these races, and then I got heavily into it, and then I just, I guess, fell in love. So, now did Jimmy let you drive his his, his car? <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. Hey, I think, no, he said, I, think I think I'm gonna have to reach out to him and convince him to let me drive one one day. So, if I can fit, <laughs> how about that? If I can fit in it, I'll try to. You know what? After football, we know what his next career is going to be. Fishing or NASCAR? Thank you so much and much success in your second year. Looking for you to make some impact and some noise out on that field. No doubt. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. There you go. Jamin Davis, number 52, second year for the Washington Commanders.